Uh, hi everyone and welcome back. So let's see a few more questions. What is the promises? What is the callback? What is a single wait? All these questions you might face. So you should be ready with the answer. Callback is just the initial way of writing the asynchronous code where function takes an argument and once, asyn once the, the asynchronous task is done, that callback function is returned. Similarly, to get rid of the callback hell when well, you have to do a lot of uh, dependent task like you got what you do one asynchronous task then you have to do second then third then you 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 end up writing the callback hell by doing the nesting of callbacks so you should use promises in that case promises has the three different state uh, resolve pending and uh, rejected so you just uh, asynchronous behavior of your code represent a promise once the promise is resolved you will get the data once that is rejected you will get the error so you can write the promises and when you wanted to write multiple independent promises where the output of all those promises need to be passed in another promise, then you can use async await. Async await looked like a, a synchronous way of writing the asynchronous code. Okay, what does a prototypal inheritance and how it differs from classical inheritance? Classical inheritance, people call it different way. Classical inheritance is about classes, which is nothing but syntactic sugar on the functions. You write a class A and you are extending class A with ext uh, class A extends class B and you are able to call or you are able to reuse the methods defined in the class A. But when we talk about the prototypal inheritance, it's about the functions where you know, the classes were not there. So in the, in the functions, we are actually inheriting the prototype of function A into the function B like uh, function A, function hello. Then what we are doing, hello.prototype.c hello equal to function and we define some properties, prototype properties on function A, then how we can inherit those properties in function B so that the object created by function B can also call those methods. So we can do that simply with the prototypal inheritance. What is callback and callback hell? So uh, callback we already talked about. Callback hell is just like whenever we have a dependent asynchronous task, task A asynchronous, once that is done, we need to do task B. When we need to, B is done, we need to do task C. And this is just about the behavior of your code, how you are writing. If you are doing the nesting of these callbacks, then it might create a problem. But you can also rectify this callback hell problem using the clean code, using just a different separate functions uh, returning the callbacks. Okay. But to just get rid of this, you can just end up writing the promises or a sync of it. What is a closer? Important questions. A closer is a function defined inside another function and has access to the lexical scope uh, even when it's executing outside its lexical scope. Uh, so you see there are nested function function A and function B and function B is doing A plus B. A is an argument passed in function A. B is the, B is the argument passed in function B. When the outer function is returned but function inner functions still have access to the, the variable passed in outer function because that is the closer. It is keeping that value inside the closer and this, that is a closer inner function. So closer has access to the variables defined in these three scopes. Okay, variable declared in its own scope that is obviously variable declared in the scope of the parent function. So that's uh, that, that example I was talking about. The inner function has access to the variable declared in the parent functions or variable declared in the global scope. So obviously function is having access to its own variables defined in the, uh, its own scope. It will have access to the variable defined in the parent functions or in the global functions or in the global scope. Okay. Now CSS specificity, this is uh, kind of theoretical, but we, we don't remember it, what it is and people get confused. So when we write the styles, we write the styles with the ID, with the CSS, with the selectors, we write pseudo classes, we write attribute selectors in CSS. Then what is the precedence? Who will take the precedence and uh, which particular styles will apply? Okay. So this is a specificity, specificity matrix. If you're writing inline CSS, then if you're writing the, the styles with the ID selector or class selector or pseudo class attribute. So this is the specificity. One with the inline, second with the ID, third with the either class, pseudo class, attribute or pseudo element. In case of equal specificity, I mean equal rules, then last rules written in the file will get applied or will get dominance. Okay. 
so inline rules has a binary one zero loops then number is the id selectors and the number of class pseudo class attribute selectors okay so you can just read more about css specificity how the css styles get supplied when you have multiple selectors defined on it okay first is html web, web storage and local storage okay so uh, session storage you can talk about so session storage is uh, application specific and that is available for a particular session local storage lives forever on the browser it's html5 storage which when you put some key value pair in the html5 storage that is kept for forever unlike cookies cookies has an expiry so after the cookies expiry that data is gone okay so this i already talked about mutable and immutable methods mutable methods which mutate the array or wherever they are applying the operations immutable like array dot filter array dot map they are running the iteration on the existing array but they do not change that array so they are immutable data structure object dot assign uh, when it creates a new object it doesn't mutate or modify the existing object it always creates a deep clone of uh, and create a new object okay so what is the only value which is not equal to itself any and not a number this is just exception so you can call it is something surprising not a number is not equal to its own right not a number can represent any value any n so obviously it will not be equal to itself because it doesn't even know if it is a not a number then what it is right explain the difference between static and instance method this is just a kind of theoretical but uh, important static methods belongs to a class right now we write in es6 now we can create a es6 class and define the static methods and normal methods normal methods will be accessed from the object static methods can be called directly from the the class name so those are static methods like array.isarray or array.prototype.push pop uh, map filter all are instance methods okay that's it thanks uh, we'll we'll talk about more questions in coming videos